our series of videos and now I'm going to actually show you how to throw the clay. So the first thing that you need to do is position yourself at the wheel properly. So you got to get up close to the wheel. You can't throw back here because you have no core strength. So what we are going to do is make sure your stool is nice and close, scoot up, give the wheel a hug with your legs. You got to turn it on though. So there's a little orange button down here we're going to press and if it turns on that's fine. You just got to make sure your pedal is where you can reach it. It's kind of like driving a car. You want to make sure you can reach the pedals. So my wheel's obviously on because it's spinning. If it doesn't turn on, it's probably because the black switch down here is in the like operating normal position. So it needs to be down in order to make sure that your wheel will spin. Okay. So where we go from here, we're going to take our clay. We're going to pop it down into the center. So I think this is why it's called throwing. There we go. All right, so I'm going to start by making sure my hands have water on them. Your hands will stick otherwise. So take my hands, get a little water on them, have my sponge ready, and we're going to start by pressing the clay onto the back because if you turn it on now, your clay might fly everywhere. So turn it on, give it a smack, make sure it's down, and then we're going to start throwing. So the first thing we're going to do is press down. Uh-oh, I didn't stick it well. So, what I'm going to do, dry my bat off, rework my clay, pop it down again, maybe a little harder this time. Really give it a smack, now it's on there. Nope, not pen off. Okay, so now I'm going to get my hands wet again, and I'm going to start to center the clay you have to center the clay first. So I've got both hands in a C position and I'm pressing down. My elbows are in my thighs so that I can hold my core still. So now I've got my clay stuck to the board. You can kind of see how the clay has a little skirt on it. That's what you want. Now you know it's stuck. Okay, so a little more water on my hands and I'm going to continue to work on this. So I'm going to start centering the clay and make sure that it's not wobbling anymore. So again, see hands. And we're gonna do what's called cone up. And that's literally what it's called. You're just pressing up the clay and you're making a cone. What this does is it helps to center all the clay. Then once you have your cone, you're gonna press back down. Now, if your hands get dry, you can always hold your sponge instead and squeeze water as you need it. I'm pressing with this part of my hand on the bat and this part of my hand on the clay and then I'm holding this hand here to press down to create kind of like a mushroom cap. And now I can feel my clay's not wobbling anymore. So once it's centered, now I can start having fun with it. So, a little water to make sure our hands don't stick. I'm going to find the center of the clay. So I'm going to take one finger, find the center of the clay, and then I'm going to slowly push down, kind of making a reverse volcano. All right, now that I've pressed down about that far, I should be about that far away from the end of the, like from the back, so that I have a base for my piece. So once it's opened up, you're going to come in, and I'm using two fingers, and I'm going to pull towards myself. This creates the floor of your piece. So here, and I've pulled open to create the piece. Now it has a floor. We need to make sure that floor doesn't crack when we fire it. So what we're gonna do is take our finger again, down in the center. You're just gonna go back to one side and back to the center. What that does is it compresses the base of the piece. You might wanna check to see how thick it is though. So one thing you can do is you can take your needle tool, you can pop it down in your piece, measure where the floor is, and so I've got about three eighths of an inch. That's perfect. You can cover up your little pinhole by just turning it back on and sliding your finger back and forth one more time. Okay, now comes the fun part. We're gonna start creating the walls of our piece. So we have to do what's called pulling up on the walls. You're gonna need your sponge for this. A little water, not too much. 
and make sure your piece has water all over it. That way your hands don't stick to it and work the piece. So I'm going to come under here, right there, and I'm going to create an indentation. And then I'm going to take both hands at the same time and slowly work them up. Be careful not to pinch the clay, because if you pinch it, it'll come off. So I've completed one pole. Now I'm going to make sure my lip is nice and flat. Football goal, finger. And that's going to flatten it out. Just like that. I'm going to pull a few more times till I get the piece to the thinness I want. Or the height I want. Again, I'm going to go back under, make a little indentation. And then you're going to slowly work your way up. Now my wheel is a little fast, so I'm going to slow it down. And up it goes. Now, a wheel works on something called centrifugal force. That means everything goes out. So as you're pulling up, it's a good idea to pull towards the center instead of out. Otherwise, you might end up with a dog dish instead of a cup. There we go. Football fingers and goal post. There we go. So my piece is done. Yay. What do we do next? We need to clean up the bottom. So I'm going to take this tool and scrape off a little of that skirt to start with. I also want to make sure that all the water is off the outside of my piece. So on the outside, I'm going to take this flat rib, not the one with the teeth on it, and I'm going to run it up the side of the piece. And that's just going to make it nice and smooth. See all that extra? Scrape that off and put it in your bucket. I'm going to use my sponge to make sure the inside doesn't have any water left in it. And then I'm going to use my chamois. This is just a little piece of leather. It's kind of like what you dry a car off with. In fact, that's the section from Walmart I got it from. Okay, I'm going to take this. I'm going to run it over the lip so the lip is not sharp when you try to drink out of the cup. Just like that. Now, you definitely want to take the skirt off of your piece because it'll chip after it's dry. So what we're going to do, so I'm going to take the needle tool and I'm going to kind of go down on the side of it and touch the back like this. All the way down, slow and steady. I can hear that I've touched the back, so I'll pull the needle tool out. And then I'll go down on the bottom. Okay. Then if you stop the wheel, you should be able to take a little section, cut it out, and then this ribbon of clay can be removed. Okay. I'm going to take my sponge one more time down to this little lip I've made and smooth that out. And my piece is done. The next thing I'm going to do is use my wire cutter. I'll use the open one. Take this. Hold it like dental floss, okay? Because if you don't, you might cut through your piece. All the way down on the bat, pull it towards yourself. You want to do this while the bat's still attached to the wheel so your piece doesn't fall off. Now, I can take my bat off and my piece can set to dry. I'll show you how to clean up in just a minute. 